year is 1410. The Polish-Lithuanian Teutonic War had been raging on for over a year. What started as a Teutonic invasion has turned into a fight for the very survival of both Poland and Lithuania as countries. Led by King of Jadosław de Geo and Grand Duke Vitautas, these staunch allies met Grandmaster Ulrich von Jungingen's Teutonic Knights on the battlefield between the villages of Grunwald and Tannenberg. One of the largest battles in medieval Europe was about to begin. Hello everybody, this is Havoc. Welcome to the Battle of Grunwald. Today we are playing, of course, as the Kingdom of or the Duchy of Lesser Poland and the Duchy of Grand or Grand Duchy of Lithuania against the Teutonic Order. I hope you enjoyed that intro. Uh, that was a pretty fun intro for me to record simply because the names were absolutely epic and completely out of my language zone. So we are, of course, as I said, playing as the uh, Duchy of Lesser Poland and the Grand Duchy of Lithuania. And so we're going to run through our units just super, super quick because I want to get this battle going and there's some things I want to talk about um, with the AI that uh, really kind of frustrated me at first. But we'll get on with it. So over here on my right flank, I left flank, I have my heavy shock division. We have two units of Polish knights. Now Polish knights in the high kingdom look pretty sweet or the high period. I like them a lot. They look just really, really epic. I love those helmets. Those are very much the uh, High Kingdom or the High Period style helmets. And then we have a units of uh, Late Period Polish Knights. I thought I'd mix those in there. Along with the Great Banner of Krakow, these guys look absolutely epic. Look at those shields. I love the banners, the lances. The tips of those lances, I mean, it all just comes together very well. And then on my right flank, I have two units of medium Mazovian Cav of the High Period. These guys look pretty sweet. They almost look Eastern uh, Roman Empire-esque, but they look pretty good. Now I have a couple of units of Heavy Axemen on my right flank. In the middle, forming that middle column, is of course two units of halberdiers, and then over on the left side, we have some Pavi Spearmen. Anytime I play as the... Uh, Kingdom or Duchy of Lesser Poland. Most of the Poland factions in general, I always like to get these Pavis uh, Spearmen just because their shields look fantastic. They just look absolutely gorgeous. I very much approve of them. And of course, our Polish Knight, he is stuck in between here. Now, our Lithuanian allies. They have a pretty good setup, too. They have a couple units of armored cav. They have a couple units of armored infantry. I like the way their armored infantry look. I like the coat of arms in the uh, Grand Duchy of Lithuania. They have some armored spearmen. They have call axemen. These dual-handed axemen will cause quite a bit of damage in the right scenarios, and hopefully that will happen today. They have a couple units of boyars and, of course, the Lithuanian Grand Duke. Now on to the Teutons, Tetons, Teutons. Uh, their signature move, we're going to put a couple of men at arms and a couple of uh, pikemen on their front line, supported by a couple of units of spear sergeants from the high period. These guys look pretty sweet. All of those halberdiers look great as well. Behind them are Prussian archers, and if you'll take a look, look at the range of these archers especially compared to the range that we have oh I also forgot to mention that the Lithuanians have some Ruthenian archers so these Prussian archers from the high period have a huge range comparable to the longbowmen in the English roster so it is a pretty epic uh, unit to use especially if you like skirmishing and then of course the signature Teton units the Rittenbrugger I am probably butchered how I said that, but that's okay. We have eight units of these guys. This was a significant... There weren't very many counts on what was used exactly in this battle, but it was very well known that they used their heavy cav, so we are going to use them. And then, of course... Um, oh, that's the written brooder. Over here, the Grand Master's Guard from the late period. These guys will definitely cause some damage. So let's go ahead and get on with the battle, and I will tell you what I'm going to do because it is slightly ridiculous. So I played this battle uh, probably two times uh, in, uh, in getting ready for this recording. Uh, the reason being 
Uh, my allies do not attack. They just refuse to, and the uh, archers, or the Teutons, also act really, really weird. They kind of refuse to engage their cav. I don't know if it's a bug. I don't know if uh, something has been changed, and it just messed it up. But I literally sat there and didn't do anything, and we all sat there for like 10 minutes. And even when I moved up, there really wasn't a huge change. So what we're going to do is we're going to be some D-bag allies and force the Lithuanian army to attack. Now, of course, these guys will definitely come up. They're going to walk in a very manly fashion. Look at those men in arms. Now, I do have the general enhancement mod, so let's go ahead and throw that on real quick. Look at that. That just gives some, uh, some blurring around the edges. It gives a uh, very high contrast and makes for some pretty sweet looking there's some modifications that could be made to it easily but that's with anything so you guys let me know if you like this general enhancement mod if you want me to keep using it in the future or not I mean it just gives kind of a really epic sense of scale uh, that a regular old mod or regular old thing don't do I mean, look at that. That's cool and all, but you don't really get a grand sense of that army until you throw the general enhancement mod. I think it looks cool without... It could use some blurring uh, debuffs, essentially. We're going to go ahead and hit super fast forward time because there's no other way that we're going to get this engaged. Here we go. So they are finally engaging. Now they're going to move up. They're just moving straight up. I mean, no... No qualms about that. We're going to move over here on the left side. I prefer left flanks to right flanks. Don't ask me why. I am left-handed, but that shouldn't really have anything to do with it. I just really like left flanks a lot. So, if you ever play me or play with me in a 2v2 or whatnot, always know that I will line up on the left side if possible. Alright, so those written brooder are uh, very much retreating. Their whole army's pushing back. And what's weird is that these Lithuanians, because the archers have been firing at them so long, they're in loose formation. So they're going to hit these troops in loose formation, and that's not going to be good at all for the troops. Uh, not one single bit, so hopefully we can get these Rittenbruder engaged, and once we tie them up, we're actually going to then turn around with our own heavy shot cav and we're gonna wreck them. So the Lithuanians are gonna get wrecked until uh, I move up a little bit. So let's move these guys up to here, get my axemen to come in, and then my Pavis spearmen will actually kind of be in a support role. Let's get these Rittenbruder. Go after that Rittenbruder. Ritter Bruder. I'm again I'm butchering it. I know I am. It's just a fun word to say. We're gonna go after the Grandmaster's Guard with our crossbowmen. Why? Because we can. Uh get out of there. I don't want 2v2 against uh their written brooder. We will get wrecked. I mean we will get absolutely demolished. Oh no. Uh, let's hit these minute arms in the back. We can suck these written brooder in. Uh, let's get a 4v1 will work for me. Uh, those written brooder were winning decisively. They are definitely going to win that battle. Hands down. No issues there. Uh, let's hit these spear sergeants in the back. Oh yeah, you're not gonna. That's gonna be a tough battle right there for both sides. But I'm pretty sure my halberdiers are going to wreck your men. Yeah, as you can see, they're they are definitely retreating. See, look, this just gives it the the way the blurs work. And this enhancement mod really gives a sense 
of scale. That's just the reason why I like it a lot. Oh, we got a charge there that I did not see. Lithuanians are pulling out. We're going to get our heavy melee out of that engagement. And we're actually going to pull our men-at-arms into the engagement. We're going to pull these guys back. See if we can't squeeze through over to here. The enemy have rallied their units. Oh no, that's terrible. Let's turn around before they can charge into me. And then we're going to actually... We've sucked in these two units of Ritten Bruder. Ritter Bruder. Yeah, you're not going to get... Oh, he did wreck him. Wow. Oh, but you got wrecked yourself. Oh, look at that. Oh, just absolute. Just... Oh, my word. We are going to get charged by them heavily. That is a lot of death going on. Look at all those. We are definitely winning that engagement. I'll tell you that. I'll tell you that much. Alright, so let's go ahead and draw the line here. They realized that charge was not worth it. Let's go after those guys because they're going to hit these minute arms or our... Not our men at arms because we don't have any. Let's turn this mod back off. I am going to be switching back and forth between that enhancement mod just because it does look really, really solid. Let's see if we can't draw these uh, halberdiers back again. And I'm actually going to use my general now. We're going to put major pressure on those uh, Prussian archers. And then we're going to surround those guys. Perfect. That's exactly what I wanted to happen. We'll draw them in. I'm going to flank them on this side. We're going to hammer and anvil them. And then we will take them out. Those written brooder are getting tore up. Uh, I would actually prefer if you guys just sacrificed yourselves. And went after those Prussian archers. There we go. And then as you can see, those written brooder are richer brooder. I get those that name butchered quite often. Uh, are going to be wrecked completely. We're gonna throw them in there, and actually we're gonna go general versus general. Do a little bit of a morale buff. And those Ritter Brooder are so uh, not bad off, I won't say that, but they are very much Yep, the enemy general's dead. Whoa, we got some major lag going on here. Major lag, but we're good now. Get some cav in there. Uh, let's go ahead and jump into here. I think those guys are definitely routing, but they're going to meet my troops. Yep, here we go. So we're starting the mass route. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We can't do much against those Prussian archers, it seems. Yep, we got wrecked by those guys, but that's all right. We're facing a little bit of lag in here with all of those guys. With all those guys routing, so we'll definitely just throw our cav into these. And we will be able to take out the Russian archers. The Prussian archers, excuse me. But they should route pretty much any second now. There we go. And that is a victory, ladies and gentlemen. A victory! We will end the battle. That was a close victory. Let's end the battle and look at the stats here. So we did win. I didn't lose very many troops at all. Our Lithuanian allies. Again, the only reason why I made them I f had to force them to engage in order for us to get anything done so across the board our heavy axemen actually did a lot better than I thought they would our uh, halberdiers didn't do much but they really held down the Ritter Bruder in order for our Polish Knights and our great banner of Krakow to come in and really do some 
excuse me, some damage on them. Our crossbowmen, they really didn't, I mean, we didn't get too many kills, to be honest. Who got the kills? These armored spearmen and armored infantry. And look at those Ducal axemen. They really tore up the battlefield against these guys. But the Teutons didn't do too bad at all. I mean, they took out, you know, a little over half, a little under half the force, I guess. Um, yeah, so their men at arms really did some work. Some Ritter Brooder did do get they did get quite a few kills. This battle historically was won by Poland and Lithuania, and it actually helped turn the tide in Europe. The Teutons were very much the OP steamrolling throughout Europe, and this decisive victory against them actually secured Poland and Lithuania as nations and caused the war reparations that the Teutons had to face from the end of this war is actually one of the leading factors uh, from what I've read that broke up the Teutonic Order and really forced a power shift uh, in, in Europe at the time away from the Teutons and away from the Crusades and the power that those orders had and really broke up that power and left a little bit of a vacuum that allowed some other countries to come in and really take over. So I do hope you guys enjoyed that. Another thing that was about one-tenth scale, uh, quite accurately, I mean, uh, they had, uh, the Polish and Lithuanians had around 39,000 men at the most from accounts, and the Teutons had about 27,000-ish. So as you can see, we are pretty decently one-tenth scale of the whole battle. I wish I could field you know 60 something thousand men that would be absolutely amazing but alas I don't think anyone could really do that right now so I do hope you guys enjoyed this battle if you did give it a thumbs up if you haven't already hit that subscribe button follow me on twitch twitter and facebook if there is a historical battle in this era that you want me to showcase send it my direction the email is in the about section on my channel and I will see what it takes to re-enact it and I will see what I can do to do it. Thank you so much guys for your support. This is Havoc and I am out of here. Peace!